Hello everybody, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine and this week I want to bring you a, a fiddle tune for the guitar. Uh, this week and last week I um, put interviews that I had conducted with Charles Sautel in 1997 on the Bluegrass Unlimited podcast and you can find that on the, on the podcast tab of the bluegrassunlimited.com webpage if you want to listen to those. And it was uh, a series of interviews I did with Charles Sotel in 1997 in preparation for publishing a book about Charles's guitar style. And it's called The Bluegrass Guitar Style of Charles Sotel, um, 27 Solos for Flat Picking Guitar. That's what it looks like. It uh, has a biography, has interviews with Charles, it has things about his lead playing, his rhythm playing. Um, pretty comprehensive study of what Charles did when he was with Hot Rise. Um, one of the tunes is in there is a fiddle tune called uh, Durham's Reel. And uh, it's a tune Hot Rise played. They recorded it on an album. And then um, if you go to YouTube, you could hear, or Spotify or any of those streaming things, you could hear the song. Charles kicks it off. And then um, you can also find a YouTube video of them playing it live and watch Charles play it. So. Go to the one of those sources to hear it at full speed and what I'm going to do is break it down for you like it's written in the tablature that will be included with this video. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it's not included there, but if you go to bluegrassunlimited.com and look at our lessons page, then you can access the tablature and the notes that was, that was written by the transcriber of the tune. Um, just to tell you uh, something about the way we approach this whole book as far as transcribing. Um, Charles had just had a bone marrow transplant and we decided to do this book to help him out and so everybody that transcribed for the book volunteered their time and effort so we had a, a different transcriber for almost every tune just because we didn't want to spread anybody too thin because they were volunteering their time and so um, when I collected all the transcriptions I took them to Charles's home and I said can we go through these to make sure that these transcribers did it did it right you know and Charles's philosophy and what he told me was, you know, I play it different every time and I don't know, I'm not going to go back and listen to the record and see what you've got written is exactly what I recorded on the record. But he said, let's go through it. You play through the tablature for me. And if it sounds like something I would not have played in that song, then we'll make a change. But if it sounded like something that I would have played in that song, then we'll keep it. So. All that to say, the transcriptions might not be 100% accurate. They're very good. Um, you know, this book's been out since 1998, and we haven't had very many people call and say, oh, your transcription's bad. Um, so they're very, they're, they're very close to accurate, maybe not 100%, but a lot of them are 100%, just, just to give you that forewarning up front. So if you listen to Charles play it on the live show, and you listen to it on the record and it's not matching up with exactly what's in this tablature, that's, that's kind of how we approached all the tablatures in this book. These are approved by Charles. He said, this, this is something like I would have played. So we were, we were happy with that. So that's, what's, uh, that's what you're gonna see here. Um, I'm just gonna go through it slow and I'm gonna teach it to you the way I teach fiddle tunes to my students and the way I try to learn fiddle tunes. Uh, I think it's the best, easiest, and fastest way to learn a fiddle tune on your instrument, whatever instrument you're playing. Um, because fiddle tunes have a specific structure. And um, this one in particular is A-A-B-A. -A -A, um, and each of those sections are eight bars. And we can break down those eight bars of each section into two bar phrases. And um, if you watch one of our, my previous videos, I talked about these two bar phrases being like the first two bar phrase we call uh, the theme and the second two bar phrase is the answer to the theme and the third two bar phrase is the sub theme and the fourth two bar phrase we call the resolution. And the reason to learn it this way is because fiddle tunes have a lot of repetition. So if you learn, for instance, the theme, that theme may be repeated later or repeated in a very similar way. And that's the case in this tune and I'll point that out as we go along. Uh, now, Charles didn't play it the same way every time because that's just not what he liked to do. He liked to vary things, and 
in, in looking at Charles's variations on these various parts of the song, you'll get some um, intuition into you know, how he approached stuff and how, how he liked the very things uh, that were similar, but maybe you know, he did it differently every time a little bit. And that was what was exciting about his playing. One of the many things that was exciting about his playing. So I'm going to go through this bit by bit, two measures at a time. We'll go for the first two measures, second set of two measures, just like that. And we'll talk about each one and go through it slowly. You'll have the tab, um, so I'm not going to be real detailed on where to put your fingers, but I just want to point out certain things about the tune as we go along. So let's get ready to do that. Okay, so the band plays this in the key of A. Charles plays it capo at the second fret. I'm just going to play it open without the capo. Not a, not a difference. The tab will look the same, and you play it in A, you just put the capo on. So, again, Charles kicks this off, and what he does is sort of a potatoes, what they call it, type thing over several bars, and then he does uh, a walk-in. So it just starts out like... <laughs> Coming out of the potatoes, he just hits a 0-2 on the, on the low E string, and then we go into the first measure where the rhythm comes in and we're ready to, ready to rock, okay? So that first two bars is over a G chord, and he's just basically walking a G major pentatonic scale. This is kind of the way that the tune is built. So he starts on the, on the low E string at the third fret, the G note, and then he just walks... Like so, and you can look at that at the tab. Now, the, the cool thing is that the second phrase, which we'll call the answer to the theme, that would be that being the theme, the second phrase, the answer to the theme over the C chord, is identical to what he just played over the G chord, moved one string over. So now I'm going to start on a C note on the um, A string and play. <laughs> There's a quarter note at the end, whereas before he did an eighth note open. So just a slight difference, but otherwise the pattern is exactly the same, that one slight difference at the end, okay? And then we're going to go into what we would call the sub-theme, which is over the D chord, and, it, and he plays like this. So that's over the D chord. And then he's back to G. Okay, so the thing to watch out for on that um, resolution phrase over the G, okay, is that, number one, I, I, I like to play uh, the two fret, four fret spread with my uh, index and my ring. Charles did it with his index and his pinky. If you watch the video of him playing, he's going... So the other thing that I do that he does different is I play with my here with my middle and in, 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 uh, index. He plays that with his ring, right? So that's just a slight difference between what I'm doing here and the fingering that he's using. So if you're going, the next thing he does is a hammer to get back to the next A part right there. Um, if you watch him on the video, again, he's playing his pinky. Now, to me, to play that note and to get all the way over here with this finger and do that hammer, is, a, is you gotta be quick. And Charles does it, he's quick like that. Now, what I would do if I was playing with my index and, and pinky, and this is the advantage to doing this, is you could go. Play that with your ring, and now your index and your middle can get over there a little bit faster to do that hammer or a slide like that, okay? If that makes sense to you. So we're coming in the resolution phrase over a G chord, we're going. Next 
next thing. So work with your fingering and see what's more comfortable for you. If you're comfortable playing with your pinky, if, if your pinky's strong enough to play all that with your pinky, uh, you try it that way. If you play with your ring and index, and then so your index is here, when you play that note, you're, you got your middle. Again, you're gonna have to be quick to get that middle string finger all the way over there to do that hammer on for the next time through the A part. All right, so now we're gonna go through the A part again. Again, this, the form of this is A, A, B, A. First time through, we already defined our parts our theme, our answer to the theme, our sub-theme, and our resolution. You've got those. It's just over one, four, five chords. You've got that in mind. Now the interesting thing is how Charles takes this that he did the first time through, and when he does that, he first he slides into that one, which is cool. And then he rearranges that a little bit in a, in a cool way to go. And then the same thing over C. And so he's taking what he did the first time and just making, you know, tweaking it, making it a little bit different. So he's not really just repeating the same phrase every time through the A part, which is neat. And now in, over the D chord, he does a cool uh, Clarence White lick. Again. That's, that's a, a really nice Clarence White inspired lick. And then he comes in again to the resolution. And so where before, where he came in and went, He's going to lead into the B part. And the thing to watch out there is your ups and downs. We want to have this down, up, down, up, down, up thing. So that slide is an up. He's not leaving space. He's going right into that as an upstroke and then making a downstroke on the open G. So that is the second A part, and we're going to now move into the B part. Okay, and now we're going to go into the B part, and again, we got another one of those little tricky um, upstroke eighth note things. It goes... Okay, and some people might feel like it, it's going to go... Which is quarter, slide, and then the big sustained note. Charles goes, he, he, he picks down and then immediately up. Okay, so it's down, up, you're going up with that slide. And he, the rest of the measure, half note, he's holding that. That's over the G chord. Now he's going to go to C. C we go into the A chord which is a little bit different we're going outside the key the key would be an A minor it's outside the 145 is what makes the B part a little interesting and Charles is going to just play uh, an A lick over that now the B part resolves over the D chord so again the theme of the B part is over the G chord, the answer to the theme is over the C chord, the sub theme is over the A chord, and then he's going to D as a resolution, and it's a very similar lick as the, the D uh, in the A part, but again, a little bit different. And you gotta be uh, careful of that. You're gonna have to go index, ring, pinky to get two, four, five on that D note, solid on that D note, just like you ended the first pass over the D chord in the A part. And so that's the B part, that's the whole part, the whole B part. And now we're gonna go back to the A part. And again, Charles is gonna play the A part a little differently than he did the first two passes. 
So this time he's going to walk into the A part with a 0, 2, just like he walked into the first A part after the potatoes at the front. But remember before he went. So this time he's going to make it a little, a little bit more sparse. He's going. So after he's played really fast over all that other stuff uh, in the first time through the A, the second time through the A, now he just makes it a little bit more sparse. Uh. Same pattern over the over the G chord as he's playing over the C chord as he's playing over the G. So he plays the exact same pattern in the third pass, third time through the A part, um, as he did uh, G same, C same. So after he goes through uh, the G figure and the C figure, the first two bars, second two bars, when he goes into the D, it's going to be almost identical to uh, the first A part D. The first A part D went, had a quarter note there. This time he's just going to, he's going to play eighth notes. He's going to go, and then same, he's going to end the G the same. That's it. That is uh, Charles Saltel's arrangement of um, Durham's Reel from the Hot, Hot Rise record. And if you want to read a little bit about the write-up and um, and all that, I'll put the I'll put exactly what was in the book in the PDF file that accompanies this lesson. So uh, listen to Charles play it on Spotify or YouTube or wherever you go to. Uh, uh, Listen to stuff, listen to uh, Durham's reel played by Hot Rise. Uh, go to YouTube and watch him play it, and then uh, look at the tab and go through it. And yeah, it's a cool fiddle tune, pretty popular, and uh, Charles does an excellent uh, arrangement of this. This is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited magazine. See you next time.